I had met at David's wedding and some of the other social functions with some of the guys, Greg Jean. And David and David had heard that he was putting together a show. He'd just finished Close Encounters. And he was putting together a show, and they needed, it was a big show, but they didn't have a lot of money. So they needed some more, you know, like, like beginning model makers, people that really want it, but weren't going to charge as much type of thing, you know. And, you know, which is fine. That's uh, the place to start. So um, I talked to Greg, and the guys were nice enough to give me a recommendation. And since I'd met Greg at some other functions and that, like sat next to him at Dave Allen's wedding, <laughs> you know, Greg hired me for 1941. And, you know, it was, a, it was a great place to begin with. Well, they never really asked about the budget, which is kind of weird, uh, which was fine with me. And we just had a dedicated crew just beating ourselves to death trying to make it the best looking thing possible. Um, we probably built more miniatures than were actually photographed. And on some of the miniatures, like the arcades, we actually had to do interiors because Stephen was thinking of putting a camera inside the miniature building, shooting out as the miniature tank went by. So we had trapdoors built on this big set. We built it on top of the uh, Esther Williams tank at MGM. So you had to crawl up ladders to get up there and light the things and uh, put a camera up there, but none of that was ever used. On 1941, um, I was involved with primarily, uh, yeah, Ocean Pacific Ocean Park, and uh, um, we did some of the submarines, some of the miniature submarines. Um, also uh, worked with 80 Flowers on uh, some of the physical effects. Uh, a torpedo that was cut from the picture that was actually ran down a track. It was a full-size torpedo we built from scratch, and I worked with 80 and uh, Logan Frazee on uh, the airplanes, Fly actually rigging and flying the airplanes for Hollywood Boulevard and all that stuff. And, you know, I was like still just a minor player in that stuff, but, you know, it's called keep your mouth shut and your eyes open. You know, working with 80 Flowers and uh, Logan Frazee, guys who had just come off of like Towering Inferno. ADU was telling me that I think they did like the spaceship stuff for Forbidden Planet. You know, they actually flew that model through the stage on wires, and that's where some of our technology came from. Plus, they had worked on and off with the Lidecker brothers over at Fox on uh, uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and some of those other Irwin Allen projects. So that's, that's where some of that technology came from, from that was, you know, like the flying sub and stuff. <laughs> You know, which is fine. You know, that's welcome to Hollywood. You know, but it, it was a uh, it was great to work with those guys, and we worked on some of the tanks and uh, um, the airplane, specifically the airplane, the P forty that Belushi crashes with in Hollywood Boulevard. Um, we built that. We actually lifted that off of did fiberglass lifts off a process mock up from Tora 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 <laughs> that they got out of Fox. So there, there's a whole thing there doing physical effects, but then uh, when Greg needed us, uh, myself and this other guy went back to working on the miniatures, and we worked on the theater, uh, the snow cone thing. Uh, Ferris wheel was done by these guys that were a, a, a metal fabricating area. We were doing buildings. Um, one of the guys was doing uh, the actual airplane construction themselves. Um, because they, they would, they, they modified kits, and then made molds of them, and then cast them up in fiberglass, so they were a lot lighter weight and more durable. And then we worked on uh, like the uh, twelve-foot model of the submarine, the Japanese submarine, and uh, um, you know lots of different things, and it helped take that stuff over and start setting things up on stage thirty at MGM. P.O.P., we didn't really have much to do with shooting P.O.P., at least I didn't. Uh, we were back there working at, at the Burbank. We were in a hangar at Burbank Airport. Actually, they had three hangars at Burbank Airport. Uh, what was it? Silver Streak had just cleared out. That big train, the train crash at the end of the movie Silver Streak 
it was shot in the hangar over there, and they had just cleared out, and Greg got the hangar, so we went right in behind them, and uh, we were working out of the hangars at Bur one, a couple of hangars at Burbank Airport, um, which is funny to drive by it today, and it's still like pretty much the same, you know. We were doing a, uh, initial tests of the airplanes on the wires, and we had a a, a rig that that had a disc on it. And the track went up, I don't know, 12, 14 feet. And you could, you could raise one end of it up and down and then rotate so the plane could do this or do this And as it was being pulled across on the wires. And we were doing a test on it, and there was a tow cable on the back with, a, with a counterbalance weights. So when you get to the end, all you had to do was walk the tow cable back at this end. It would automatically go back to the beginning position. Okay. Well, we're pulling the thing across for one of the tests, and the wire snapped in the front. Our tow wire snapped. So the model was drawn all the way. We had about 125 feet of wire stuck out. So the thing was drawn all the way across the hangar, hit the backstop on the other side, and the model just exploded. It was Luckily, it was one of the test planes. And everybody's just like, <laughs> oh, boy. And one time I was coming back, for, we, we were working with the, the uh, torpedo, and again, that was, that was on like uh, tracks. So the thing weighed, it took six or eight guys to lift that thing. It was made of wood, it was steel framework, wood, bondo. We had a tank of nitrogen in it so it would make the propeller spin. And then it had a plow down because it was supposed to be fired by the Japanese submarine and then go up the beach and through the amusement park. But they decided that that was too expensive, so they just hit it with some cannon fire. Well, I was coming back from a run when they were doing a test. And they're, they're testing, I guess, to see how fast this thing would go or whatever. And as, as I'm pulling up to come back from this run, I hear it going in the hangar. And all of a sudden, you're pow! And the thing went the cable broke, the braking cable broke, and it went like 20 feet across the floor and through the door of the hangar, just opened it up like, and I'm getting, I'm walking like this, and about where that wall is, is where this thing just stuck through the wall and almost hit people's cars. And then they all come out there, uh, Spielberg and a bunch of the guys are out there, and they're all laughing, they're like, holy shit, and we had to take it in the shop and fix it up. <laughs> But well, that was about it for funny model stuff. Um. <laughs> no, the only uh, thing that sort of stands out in my mind is when we were shooting the uh, Ferris wheel going off the pier in 1941, uh, we devised the system to, uh, a guy would run along the side, it was me for the first day, pulling a cord that was embedded in the, uh, the decking of the pier that sort of ripped up the balsa wood as the Ferris wheel supposedly was crunching into it, but it was actually like that far above it. And it worked fine. The Ferris wheel went off, hit the water, and then there was all this silence. And then Stephen's assistant came back and said, Stephen wants to know if you could do that again. <laughs> but keep the lights on the Ferris wheel on as they go underwater. And I'm like, okay, let's see. So we came up with a way of doing it. And then uh, I think the first shot was like 9 o'clock. And I think by five or six, we got the last shot done and stayed underwater, on underwater with the explosions. But because it hit the water, Stephen wanted a bigger explosion, so we put primer cord around it. The effects guys did. And so it was pretty bent out of shape by that time. So that, there wasn't going to be a third cake that night. <laughs> but apparently he got what he wanted, so it's like fine. But it's like one of those things, like, oh, my God. <laughs> Everybody's here, and the stage is on rental, and people are screaming. <laughs> I was there about 11 months. I, I didn't get onto the, uh, they hadn't even really started building Hollywood Boulevard yet. The main drag, of course, was one-to-one -one scale. And then because of the uh, stage space, everything was like really forced. But it was nighttime, so it didn't matter. And uh, I remember we sent out calls to all these furniture appliance stores to get these big refrigerator cardboard boxes. And that's what they were, with holes cut in them, lights put in them. You know, to be honest with you, um, you know, 41 was a union job, and I wanted to do a lot more than just build the models. I wanted to shoot. 
I wanted to be involved. You know, and my idea of being involved was not being in the shop covered in sawdust. <laughs> you know, um, I actually did the first six, the first film test of the airplanes. We rented a 16 millimeter camera and I set it up in the hangar and we shot some high speed film of the airplanes and they showed it to Spielberg. And then they decided we're going to spend the money on a 35 on the 35 cameras. So of course when you're doing that, I wasn't near a camera because it was a union job. I was holding the ladder that the camera was on. And when that happened, I, that pretty much, this is not going the direction I wanted to go. Wasn't, you know, wasn't what I really wanted to do. Hold the ladder. <laughs>